stores a cupola in a gray iron foundry after it has been in operation for several hours. It has produced almost enough iron to meet the foundry's needs for the day and is about ready to be shut down. Certain telltale signs indicate when the end of the heat is near. One of these is a glow appearing at the charging floor, an indication that very little unmelted metal remains in the cupola. Another helpful sign is the reduction of air pressure as indicated on the air pressure gauge. When the air pressure drops considerably below normal, in this case below 20 ounces, it is a further indication that the cupola is running dry reduce the volume of air flowing into the cupola. This helps to prevent needless burning out of the cupola lining. When the glow from the charging door becomes very bright, it is time to cut off the blast completely. remaining molten iron in the cupola is now drained off. If this is not needed for making castings, make pig iron out of it and save it for future use. Before dropping bottom and draining the cupola, Make sure that the floor under and around it is dry. Moisture caught under the hot drop will form steam rapidly enough to cause an explosion. Next, remove the two screw props on either side of the main prop. Now set the metal drag in place to receive the hot drop. This allows the drop to be pulled away quickly so that the cupola will not be damaged by it. Hook the chains onto the main prop and the metal drag and cover the drag, chains and floor with sand to protect them from the heat. In this foundry, the power for drawing the bottom prop and for removing the hot drop is provided by one of the foundry cranes. This is both a labor saving and a safety measure. Materials still left in the cupola are dangerously hot, so all workmen must remain at a safe distance while the bottom is dropped. At a signal from the foreman, the chains are drawn and the main prop released. The crane continues to pull the chains until the hot drop is drawn away from the cupola. Turn streams of water on the drop immediately to quench it so that work may be safely resumed around it and the drop itself removed as quickly as possible. Use great care to avoid spraying water on the bottom doors because they are still so hot that cold water would crack them. After the cupola and drop have cooled, prepare for the next melting operation. First, remove the drop. Next, the interior of the cupola must be cleaned out. To reach the various parts of the cupola that need to be repaired, a plank is placed across the bottom doors.
As a safety measure, the plank is wedged securely in place. But before entering the cupola, be sure that the safety screen is also in place. The screen protects the workmen from falling pieces of slag and metal that may be dislodged during the cleaning operation. In this foundry, the screen is handled by the charging crane. A ledge built into the cupola lining supports the screen. After the screen is in place, lower a work light through the safety screen door. For cleaning off the lining of a large cupola, a pick and a crowbar are commonly used. Inside the cupola, will be found accumulations of slag, coke, and metal adhering to the lining. These must be cleaned off thoroughly so that they will not interfere with the proper operation of the cupida during the next heat. Be sure to cut away all of the slag and other accumulations, but avoid gouging out any of the cupida lining unnecessarily. Slag tends to accumulate heavily around the tweers because the cold air entering there causes the molten slag to freeze. Tweers must be cleaned out very thoroughly so that air can enter freely. Slag and tap holes must also be cleaned out thoroughly. In the case of the tap hole, the lining around it must be knocked out too, leaving a large opening which is known as the breast. This will later be built up to form a new tap hole. Tap and slag spouts must also be cleaned out. A crowbar is usually used for this operation. Be careful not to gouge out more of the lining than is necessary. After the heat and after the cleaning process, the lining may appear as irregular as this. lining must be restored to its original size and shape. This is important because the melting rate of the cupola depends upon its diameter. The calculations of the metallurgist are based on the diameter being maintained unchanged from heat to heat. Notice that the lining is not perpendicular throughout but slopes away from the tweers to allow slag to flow over them instead of into them. For the repair of the lining, a daubing mixture is used, and this is made up either by machine or by hand. Here a machine is mixing proper proportions of fire clay, sand and water. Exact proportions may vary depending on the materials used. Be sure the mixture is not too wet. It should make a firm ball when rolled and should hold firmly when thrown against a wall. Before applying the daubing mixture, wet the surfaces to be repaired. In this foundry, a hose is used. 
Frequently a foundation coating of clay wash is applied instead of plain water. Daubing mixture is applied with bare hands and for best results it is thrown in place. This helps to fill up all the holes and to secure firm contact between the daub and the solid lining. The aim in repairing the lining is to build up a surface which will be just as heat resistant as the original lining. Make the lining as smooth as possible so that slag will be less likely to adhere to it. Wherever the lining has been cut back more than an inch and a quarter, fire bricks are used to build up the lining. These bricks are set in a layer of daubing mixture and then covered with more daub, which is finally smoothed with clay wash. To be sure the cupola is being restored to its proper diameter, an adjustable measuring rod is used. Rotate the rod to discover any deviation from the required diameter. Now rebuild the slag and tap holes. Use fire bricks to fill most of the opening. Then insert a pipe of proper size and build up the remaining opening with daub. Use daub to cover the bricks completely, again throwing it into place. Use special care to obtain a smooth lining throughout, especially around the tweers, so that air will flow uniformly into the cupola. Then cover the sides and bottom of the slag spout with daub. Throw the daub into place and smooth it with a brush. Withdraw the pipe carefully. Then smooth the edges of the slag hole, both outside and inside. The tap hole is built up in a similar fashion. But in the case of the tap hole, a quantity of ground up fire brick is used to ensure a more heat resistant lining. After the material is tamped firmly in place, carefully remove the pipe. Then cover the material with clay wash. The remainder of the breast is then filled with daub and the tap hole finished in the same way as the slag hole. After the sides of the tap spout are covered with daub, the bottom of the spout is lined with a specially prepared mixture containing a high percentage of fire sand. Tamp the mixture firmly in place. The bottom doors may now be closed. In this foundry, the doors are lifted mechanically. On smaller cupolas, they are light enough to be lifted by hand. With this device, the great weight of the doors can be handled with relative ease and safety. A lip on one of the doors fits over the other door to make a tight bottom. Now prop the doors up solidly, using first a screw prop under each door. A screw the props as tight as possible. Now place a heavy metal plate on the floor between the screw props. Set one end of a solid prop on the metal plate 
and wedge the other end against the lip of the bottom doors. Now three stout props support the doors and the very heavy burden which will be dumped on them. The cupola is ready for the sand bottom to be laid. The material used is ordinary molding sand. The sand is dumped in through the charging door. Since the safety screen was removed before this operation, it is now replaced. To aid in fixing the sand bottom, a shovel and a sand tamper are needed. The sand tamper is a rod with a heavy metal disc on one end. To reach the bottom of the cupola, a ladder is used. Lower the ladder carefully so as not to damage the repaired lining. Distribute the sand evenly over the bottom, sloping it gently from all sides toward the tap hole to ensure a uniform flow of metal in that direction. Tamp the sand firmly, but not hard enough to destroy its permeability. A slope of about three quarters of an inch to the foot is sufficient. Now spread shavings over the sand bottom to facilitate the firing of the cupola and to protect the sand bottom from being damaged when the kindling material is dumped. A quantity of flat boards is also needed to make a protective covering over the newly repaired lining. If this protective covering is not built up, kindling and coke when dumped into the cupola may damage the lining and the sand bottom. After the ladder and safety screen are removed, the cupola is ready for its next melting operation.